For those of you that are new here, welcome to Boss Bitch Radio. This episode is one that we try to do once a month at least. Some I think we missed last month maybe, but it is boobies, bodybuilding, and bullshit. bullshit. So we are going to dive into what's been going on in our world, the things that we're doing. It's the new year, things that we have goals, which we have very different goals and we have very different strategies. So stay tuned so you can find out what that is. And then we're just going to talk about what we've been up to for the last few months since our last episode of Boobies, Bodybuilding, and Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. I don't even know what your goals are. I know. That's why I was like, I'm not going to tell you. We're just going to talk about it here today on the podcast. Okay. So are we going to start with goals? Let's take a little bit of a, let's take a trip back in time. Okay. Let's take a trip back in time. We won't spend too much time there because we want to get to the meat and potatoes because our strategies I really want to get to because I think they're very unique uh -huh. with your goals, my goals, and how we're getting there. Okay. And I think there are plenty of great tools to be taken from both of us in that for people in different points of their journey. Right. right? Like you have a more calculated, you want to stick to, you know, the, the, all the, things okay. and mine is more free flowing. Okay. But we're going to, we're going to go into how that is even going to work, but let's go back to just kind of a recap with actually, no, no, what we, we are going to start with this. Let's start with this right now. And we'll save the fun talk for the end because we want to give you <laughs> the, the goods at the end. Okay. okay. All right. So let's start with the our our goals. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. So I'm talking about our goals. Yeah. I didn't write mine down, but you're gonna have to remind me if. I'm okay. Ready. So uh, do you want me to roll? Do you want to roll? Let's do go. Let's go. And then I'll go. Okay. So just for reference, because we get asked this often, people think I'm like five ten, which is funny. But I'm five four. I'm right now. I'm sitting pretty at about 155 pounds for the last like two weeks. 45 years old. I've been training forever, right? Since 2008 or whatever. So, and, and you need context for that because it's important as to why my goals are different. We were talking about this in the studio. I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off a little bit. Yeah, no, this okay. is what we do. But we were talking about like, how long have you been training? Right. And then there's another question of like, the one thing that we were talking, there's a difference between lifting weights and there's a difference between training. Right. So I've been lifting weights and kind of training for 10 years. Yeah. Which sounds like a long time, but it's also not a long time. So there was somebody in the studio today that said that they had been lifting since 2003. Oh, yeah. So that's 20 years. Damn. This mm -hmm. is great, right? So right. It's just kind of funny to see, because especially because, you know, we have girls that just started today. Yeah. Weight training, weight training for the so first time. Amazing. It's, it's exciting to kind of see everybody's difference where they started and where mm. they're at. A lot of times, what I see is people that weightlift continue to do it. Yeah. It tends to, once you get past the point of like going through all the emotions with it at first, when you start, I think at least for me as a woman, when I first started, I was like, this isn't as good as my cardio. Like I'm not sweaty. And like, is this even working? Because it's like, you don't see that immediate, like instantaneous, like feeling biofeedback, right? Like the sweat and all that. So yeah, I mean, I totally get what you're saying, but when I stuck to it for a year consistently because I like paid for my trainer, yeah, totally different, right? Like it was totally different. Okay, so this to go on me, I'm five foot and three quarter inch. Okay, don't forget about that. Um, you know, as it works out for us, we always weigh about the same. Yeah. So I'm. Oh, like, I didn't even know you weigh that right now. That's so funny. Six one fifty seven is kind of where I'm like bouncing back and forth. Um and. I held that through the holidays, mm -hmm. through New Year's, which we'll talk about later. But I'm also 37 years old. I'll be 38 this soon. Year. Yeah. Okay. So you have some context, two different body shapes, two different, you know, training durations and things like that. And also two different, very, very different desires on how things, you know, how we want to do things. So we're going to go into that. But my big goals for 2024, when it comes to the conversation of like health and fitness, right? Because I think we talked about this maybe last time we did a new year's episode or something like that. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to say that I don't set body goals. Like when I'm competing, clearly yes. Right. But when I'm not, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't set them because it's like fitness is just a part of what we do. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, fitness is so easy for me because that's not what I'm saying. But it's like, I don't 
I, I guess I feel pretty good about my body where I'm just like, I already know what I'm doing wrong, like right. or wrong if I really wanted to change anything. So it's like, I don't typically have hard goals like that. So all of that being said, my big goals for health, fitness and whatnot are, I want to continue with the theme of like a photo shoot on my birthday every June. And I think it's great, especially because I'm not competing anymore, that it gives me a little something that lights a fire under my ass a bit. And I mean, I did it last year and I didn't get all crazy with like the diet or anything like that. And I loved the pictures so much. So um, I just have that top of mind. And then just for like metrical goals, I would like to get my waist down to about 28, 29, like round belly button. So that's just one thing that I have in my head. And then having a better PMA. Okay. Do you know what that is? No. Positive mental attitude. Oh, yes. <laughs> I got that. Positive Pollyanna said that probably like, i don't know so but probably somebody my age yeah and they were like pma i'm like oh i got that yeah so really what i mean by that is we were just having a brief conversation about the fact that like you know i i've been under a lot of stress and like work work my business is is stressful but it's it's good stress right so it's like having flipping that script because it's just like a story that i'm telling myself like oh, oh you know and then um really that's it i mean i'm i'm happy with everything else on my physique i'm not like trying to get lean i'm not trying to grow a ton of muscle i'm just maintaining and like really wanting to feel energized more than anything that's that's where i'm at Okay, so I didn't write mine down like this because, you know, we did our goals weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little, you know, I was helping everybody reach their goals. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I already did that. Um, but I guess for my goals, in all honesty, so kind of like what she said, and I feel like a lot of people over the holidays got overworked, overstressed, spread too thin. You know, maybe some of the things kind of didn't get done as much as you wanted them to, you know, obviously I wasn't training consistency consistently as I have in the past. Right. So in reality, I was getting maybe one or two workouts a week, maybe one or two cardios, which is not ideal. Right. However, we were like heads down trying to work, you know, so sometimes that happens. But so my biggest goal is actually uh, what I've been talking about. I you didn't even tell me your goals. I, well, I mean, yeah. I kind of did. Yeah. So I, I used the new year, right? Because I know where our schedule was going to be that January 1st was not going to be where I was going to hit the pavement and go hundred percent. Right. If I would have done that, I would have been like, fuck y'all guys. This is too hard. I can't do all of it. Right? <laughs> so I have told myself and I've been sticking to it because I've kind of got these things planned in, in order with the goddess body project, which I'm also doing, but week one was a soft start. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, bitch, just get in there three days a week, get two days of cardio, and then we'll go from there, right? And I've been starting to track my food. Was I perfect by all means? No. Did I track those first two weekends? Probably not as good as I could have, but week two was the soft medium start. Oh yeah, see, there's a progression. The soft medium start. Okay? I, and you know what's funny is we kind of talked about this, but I would already, this is essentially what I'm doing too. So I didn't want to overwhelm myself with trying to do all the things because, you know, you got to, celebrate the little wins right? yeah yeah the first week was i got in three training sessions i got in two cardios and i was being fairly mindful about my food right there was a point where i was just kind of willy-nilly trying to get meal prep from the studio this time i actually made my own food right so oh yeah that's a big step more and more every week now this week was you know basically the start of the goddess body project which is the program that we're running um it is three months of you know, tracking macros, getting your body goals, whether you want to have a one-on-one -on -one coach, you want to do um, online VIP, or if you're wanting to do the group aspect. So what I did is because I'd be feeling like I kind of know what I'm doing and I can do it if I have a little bit of a community behind me, mm. and a little bit of a plan, right? So I took the group portion and I'm like, all right, I'm going to be there for all of the zooms i'm going to be there for the goal setting i'm going to i'm going to do this i'm going to get my macros and i'm going to track my food right and so it's been you. well so ever good since job january i've already lost 10 pounds what high five right here <laughs> you also have to think you know over the holidays like my weight would jump up right after christmas it would come back down it jumped up after the holidays it came back down so this is kind of the thing is now what i'm doing is just getting the big rocks as somebody would say um and i'm just making those a habit and making that a win if i can at least do those right 
once I have all of these basics, then next week is the medium hard week. And then let's go hard after that because then I've already got all of these little habits that are now easy to do because I've been doing them every day. Yeah. 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 I love that. And it's true. I mean, that's essentially what we're doing, you know, Not that you care, but now, you know, well, <laughs> for me, it was a little bit of, you know, well, I talked about in the podcast, you know, uh, I don't know, just November, December, October, you know, that whole moving and all that stuff was a little bit crazy. Yeah. But when we sat down to outline the podcast today, I'm like, okay, I'm going to like, look at how many times I've been to the gym and all that, because I want to set realistic goals for myself because I'm no less busier. We were busier ramping up for the goddess body project, but now we're like in the second phase of that, which is actually like coaching the girls and doing all that stuff and the creating the content and dialing it in, you know, for the rest of the program and whatnot. And also then relaunching again in April. So it's like, there's really no, there's not like a ton of downtime. So I know that if I think I'm just going to like drop everything and now I'm going to be in the gym six days a week, uh, you know, for an hour and hour, hour and a half, it's probably not realistic for my life now. So in November, I got to the gym 13 times in December, like my motivation started to take a dive December. It was 12. And then January, it was three. And two of those days were today and yesterday. Okay. And we're, How we're you're doing. Yeah. And we're on the 17th now, but I started to notice my motivation took a swan dive right around November because, and I'll, I'll have Alexis put the video in here. My son, I was throwing a fit at the gym and I was like, I don't want to be here. I, this is miserable. I was at my boyfriend's gym and I was just like, just, it was everything to even get me there. And then once I was there, I just didn't want to do it. Be here. But you don't want to But I'm here. And so this is what we do. We throw a fit. We get all of the fit out of the system. Is that? <laughs> pray to the blue gods to give us the strength to lift the things from the cheeks to become worthy of Instagram thirst trap Thursday photos. It's normal, first of all. I just want to let you know. And it's to the point where I've done three days this week. So I thought, okay, my goal is that for January, I just want to try to get into the to into the gym at least 14 times, which I know is a hefty lofty goal, but or 14 days of movement. Let me retract that statement. 14 days of movement. And for me, that means either I'm going to get 8000 steps a day or I'm going to hit the gym and or both would be great, but I'm not going to hold myself to having to have to get both done. So like today I went to the gym. We did back. We did 20 minutes of the stairs. I feel great with that. And I'm at almost 6000 steps. So by the end of the night, I'll probably hit close to eight. And if not, like, I'm not going to cry about it. Like, it's not like, oh my gosh, you know, the world is over. I'm not making progress. Right. And then gym, gym sessions, four days a week is what I'm going to try to stick to. And then two lower, one full body, one upper body, because I'm, I'm literally doing the goddess body project training program, which is six weeks. And I'm like, Alicia and I built that. So I, it's, it's f fucking legit. So I'm, I'm doing it. So, and it kicked my ass yesterday and it kicked my ass today. So, um, that's where we're at with that. So how's your training and what's, what are you doing with training now? So as of like the last week, right, I kind of had those same goals. I was like, okay, what I want to do is I want to do four days in the gym and I want to do three days of cardio. Well, didn't quite happen in that way, but I lifted five days and I did two days of cardio. So for me, I would rather lift than do cardio. And I'm not going to cry about not hitting the goal exactly as I put it, because Lifting to me is more important than doing my cardio because yes, as maybe I have some goals to kind of lose a little bit more weight and lean out, I'm not going to crush myself in these first couple of weeks to make sure that I get it all done, right? Right. So as of this week, um, you know, I didn't have enough time on Monday because we were launching and I was just making sure everybody had everything they needed. So I did work out, but I didn't get cardio in that day. So then on Tuesday... I worked out and I got cardio. Today I worked out at 5 a.m. because I came to see you. It was worth you it. You can get it in, okay? Um, and then it's looking like my week is gonna be pretty good going forward to kind of like just getting that in. So I would like to see four to five days of training. Maybe we'll get that third day of cardio this week, would be great. Um, I got my macros and I'm doing a pretty good job so far. I love that. Yeah, I'm feeling good about it. 
So before we dive into the diet piece, for those of you that are here on Instagram, watching live, or those on the YouTubes Hi. hanging out with us so far, how have your New Year's goals been going? Are you getting in the gym? How is it going? Tell us. Let us know. Put it in the comments. If you have any questions that are training related, plop them in there since we're on that subject and we'll get to them at the end for sure. So don't be shy here. We're all family. Okay. It's, it's not cool when you just sit and stare at us and you don't talk to us. You know? If anybody's feeling like they're struggling, right? They made a goal. Maybe it was too lofty. Maybe it's just not quite hitting perfectly. Do what I did. Soft start, medium start, hard start. Love that. Okay. Just do that. Yeah. You're doing more than not doing anything. Give us some hearts for that one over there. Give us a little. And if you're crushing it. Of the heart button. For that. Keep fucking crushing it. Okay. Next is our diet piece of things. And I'm going to go into what I'm doing. Okay. Very. I think it's very boring, but that's what keeps me on track. So I do not count macros. I've not count macros in well over a year, maybe two years. Okay. It's probably been three years. I don't even know. You can look at a meal and macro box that in your head. Yes. So I do have that advantage. However, you do too, but you just prefer the like preciseness and knowing. <laughs> and I need to make sure that I'm not eating over my macros. So I feel like this is this what I'm about to tell you. So if you're distracted, come back for just a second here, is super important if you feel like you struggle with macro tracking. All right. My food goals or my diet goals are in line with my body goals, but it, they are based off of two questions now, now that I no longer compete and my priorities have rearranged and how I feel about food has changed. It's based off two questions, which the first one is what am I willing to cut back without feeling deprived? Mm -hmm. That's the first question. Okay. And then the second one is, or and that's because I'm not interested in the mental friction with dieting and decision making and restricting. I'm just not, that's a lot of mental fatigue. I'm like, I'm mental fatigued all day and I just don't want to have to think about that shit. Right. Um, and feel deprived. I just don't want that feeling. It's not necessarily like thinking like, oh, I got to figure out what I'm eating. It's just like, do I want to put myself through that and have one more thing to think about? Right. Like, right. Right. I can't have this thing. Right. So that's, that's one of the questions. The second one is what is really worth for me to partake in? So for example, if we go out to dinner somewhere or we do something and there's appetizers or whatever, cause we like to order a few apps and like, and then I order, you know, a sensible meal of some kind. If I have a couple bites of it and I'm like, it's not that great, I'm not going to eat it just because I paid $15 for it. I don't care. Like that used to be me because I'm like, oh my God, my parents were growing up in poverty and I'm like, I, you know, it's a sin to waste food, right? So I just am like, I'm not, I'm not interested in eating that. So I'm not going to do it. If it hurts my stomach, if it doesn't taste good, if I know that if I have too much alcohol, I'm not going to feel good the next day, I'm being just more aware of those types of things, obviously more now in January than the holidays. Yeah. But those are my two things. One, what am I willing to cut back without feeling deprived? And two, what is really worth it for me to partake in? So with that, for me, I'm doing more of an intuitive eating approach, which I just, that's what I'm calling it. Yeah. But I don't necessarily know that that's what it is by definition, right? Like I'm not an intuitive eating coach. Right. You know, like I, I can, I'm sure I could I, guide someone no, through that, but I don't, you know, have the. What's happened is you've learned how to do that because you've done macros and you've meal prepped. So like you can look at something and be like, hey, you know, this is probably about where I am at. Plus, the one thing that I think makes it easy for us is because we can look at a day and be like, okay, if I have four meals and there's 20 to 30 grams of protein in that, I'm about in my mat in where I need to be for my protein. Correct. And that's how you make that easy. Yes. Just eating intuitively. Right. So for me, like post bodybuilding, it was like so structured, you know, structured and regimented and all that. And I knew I just knew, right? But when you're in contest prep, you want to be meticulous about those things. So I would weigh and I would like measure sauces and I was doing all of that stuff that you need to for that goal. Right. But I'm not doing that anymore. And I don't, I have no interest in living like that anymore because bodybuilding, if you want to be good at it, it's like, it's a fucking full-time commitment, right? Like your whole, we were just talking about this in the kitchen. Like your whole life revolves around you. Yeah. And like grand, yes, it does now, but no, it does. You know, it is, it's a, 
you just become your, your own focus. So for, for now, it's like, I don't know how much protein, protein I'm getting, but if I had to guess, it's probably between like 120 and 150, yeah. depending on the day. And every meal has a lean protein, which I think is the same for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then I try to get some kind of seafood in once or twice a week, generally like a salmon or some kind of shellfish or something just for, you know, variety and protein sources. And I'll have usually one protein shake or one bar per day, but I try not to. I just don't like to do too many fakey protein things. But I, you know, sometimes like I'm stuck at my desk here for 10 hours and you know how that is and we're running around. And I'm just like, it's going to have to do right now. Um, so what about you? How about your protein stuff? Like what is your, your so go-to? So what is your protein macros? Yeah. Tell yeah, us what they are. Macros. Um, I believe we're at 148, 151 ish area. Um, you know, with that, it's not hard for me to hit. I like protein. Protein is going to be the thing that keeps me full. So if I'm not keeping on that, usually by the end of the night, I become a pantry monster. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Um, for my carbs, you know, I keep this pretty easy. Um, I'm not a huge rice fan. I know that everybody's like, oh, well, when you're dieting, you need to eat rice. No, I mean, I like rice cakes, which sounds like a, a diet food, but I always get the flavored ones unless I'm in prep. Um, and I like doing that. Like, it yeah. tastes good to me. And then, um, like, corn tortillas. I like to make a freaking taco out of anything. Um, and I like wraps. Yeah. And that like, and these are the kinds of things that when you go into contest prep change significantly, right? right, right. Like your wraps will then move to rice yeah. or potatoes or something like that. And so we know how to adjust things. Should we want to be more aggressive? We just are like, there's no need to be like so intense right off the gate. Cause we know how, how it's like triggering. Yeah. I mean, like I'm pretty good with what I've been doing because like I eat the same three ish things for breakfast. I eat the same three ish things for lunch. I just kind of sauce them different or I just make them look different. Right. Yeah. But like, that's the thing is when you're in a lifestyle, which is like kind of what we're doing right now, everybody keeps asking me if I'm going to compete. I'm like, listen, just let me live my life. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just let me live my life. Okay? I know it'll, so, it'll stop soon. Don't it worry. <laughs> mean, yeah. It does not mean that you can't go into a cut or you can't lean out or tighten up or whatever you want to do. So it's, I just feel like doing it the lifestyle way, you can add these things into where it's not feeling like you want to poke your eyeball out. Yeah. You know, like for me, what, what are you going to give up? So what did I want to give? What did I have to give up? In reality, I'm giving up either something by way of fat, you know, because like maybe I'm not having almond butter anymore, or maybe I'm switching it out for something else. Um, you know, typically cheese goes first. That's what I just, and, and that's really what I cut out too. Yeah. I thought, I think that's funny because cheese was something that I had to cut out immediately when I started bodybuilding. And I was like, I like it cheese. literally ripped my soul out. I was just like, there's no cheese on here. And I'm Portuguese, you know, that's like a sin, right? Yes. Um, my dad is going to like disown me, but <laughs> it was just like such a shocker. But now I'm, I had it removed so much that I just never really added it back too often, right. but I was adding it in last year a little bit and then it became a lot, a lot more and whatnot. And it just doesn't really agree with me anyways. And yes, it's great and all that, but I'm like, I'm not like going to be sad if it's gone. Like it doesn't bother me if I don't have cheese on my tacos or a quesadilla or anything like that. Like I'm, it's, I'm fine with that. Yeah. And it, you know, I just kind of like pick and choose, right? Because I'm not going to say that I'm going to hit my macros all of the days, all of the weeks, all of the weekends, you know, like I'm probably going to go on date night with my husband. I'm, I'm not going to lie. So what I want to do is I want to keep pretty clean and pretty easy during the week. And then if I have one little extra meal out with my husband, it's not going to crush me. Yeah. You know, and then I'm going to just continue on and let the next day be the next day and keep going. Yeah. Well, for me, I know we go out a lot on the weekends too. And like, I haven't eaten out so much in my life. <laughs> that sounded terrible, but like it, I, since I've been dating Jack, like we just, we do that, right? Like we work hard. It's just like one of those things where like we can get out and go and do things and we don't see each other. And I'm honestly, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that like I'm trapped at home all day. Right. And I work here and I have no humans to talk to. So when he gets home, I'm like, hi. Blah, 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 and he's just like, whoa, you know, and like we're talking and stuff, but it's nice for us to get out. So we were going out to dinner like three nights a week and then the weekends and all that stuff last year. But we, you know, we reined it in and all that, but now it's like just the weekends. Yeah. But 
during the week, my carbs, I just, I don't know how many carbs I eat. I have zero clue. I haven't even tried to track. I don't open my fitness pal to look at it, to even think I'm going to figure it out. But I just eat less carbs on the days I'm not doing things. Right. Or I know I'm not going to get out and move around or walk or do any of that. I just don't. And my appetite really isn't that big either. So on those days. So I just eat less carbs that day. And with alcohol, and I kind of lumped this into the carb conversation, is that the weekends were getting a little squirrely for a bit. And it was like the nature of like holiday parties and all that stuff. But then I did a little mini, like, I want to drop five pounds in five days right before San Diego, made that happen. And it kind of started the ball in my brain. Like, okay, we got to, you know, we got to start getting back on track. You're feeling like shit. Your attitude is shit. Like all this stuff. Right. And so. um, getting tired of our own bullshit. Yeah, exactly. That's what Austin would say. Exactly. And though, even though I've only been to the gym three days this month, um, with the weekends and stuff we've been going out, I'm just like, I just do two drinks. I'm like two drinks. I'll still feel good the next day. And I won't regret that. And it's been fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you going to still drink alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a second, I was like, maybe I'll do dry January. And then it was somebody wanted me to go out and I was like, all right. Yeah. I, it's fine. It's a, it's a dry ish. Like I get it. And I think, I think it's great for some people, you know, it kind of gets their wheels in motion and it tips more dominoes for them to get into a groove. But I mean, let me be real. You're not going to feel as you would feel the next day. If you are drinking alcohol, even if it's one drink, you're not yeah. going to sleep the same. You're going to wake up. You're going to be like, mm, felt like I drank last night. Okay? Yeah. Even if you're like, no, I'm fine. Like, okay, fine. But your body knows you fucking drank last night. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I get it. It's definitely been pulled back. I think I've only drank twice this month already. And like, it's already day 17 when I would have been like drinking twice or three times in a week. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and Thanksgiving, honestly, I would love to know what you guys think, because (laughs) how do you do, how do you do alcohol when you are in a new year's resolution? How does it work for you? I would love to know. Right? Tell us if you skip, do you dry January? Yes. We're not, we're just talking for normal stuff, but you know, normal everyday life. But what'd she say? Damp January. Damp. Damp January. Damp January's, well, it will take that, right? But here's my philosophy on that. Do you care? I don't know if you care, but I'm going to tell you guys anyways. Oh, I was like, what? With dry January, okay? If you just have like a social level of alcohol drinking, like I feel like I do, right? Like I'm not drinking Monday through Friday and, you know, smashing a bottle of wine every night because I'm not judging because I used to be that person, all right? Yeah, for a long time and it was an issue. And so now it's it's a social thing because when I started bodybuilding, I, you can't drink. Right. And then when I was in the off season, I was just like not worth it and all that. So I didn't really do a ton in the off season, but now I'm like, okay, not competing anymore. And like alcohol is fun and I enjoy it. So I feel like if you drink socially like that, where you have maybe like two to four and like, this is just me and not your doctor talking. Okay. (laughs) Two to four drinks max on the weekend. Not like Friday you have four Saturday, you have four and Sunday you have mimosas and have four. No, it's like, you have four total, but like, I'm only doing two. I think if you can manage that and it doesn't get to a point where it's disrupting your sleep, it's affecting how you work and all those things. Like you can keep that in while you're living a healthy lifestyle. It's totally okay. So that's, that's my philosophy. I agree. Okay. And then, um, fats, how many fats are you having? Do you know when we're talking about macros now? Like 42, 42, pretty low, but knowing my body, we know how it works. Yeah. 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 It takes a minute. Yeah. Yeah, So I'm just, again, I'm not tracking macros just as a recap. If anybody's new to the moments here, I am doing more of an intuitive approach, but for me, how I do that with dietary fats, because my brain still works very much like a bodybuilder, like how much protein, carbs, and fats are in this meal. So when I'm building a meal or, you know, eating out or whatever, I think in this context of protein, carbs, and fat, And the fat component of it, what I essentially did, as I said earlier, we are basically omitting cheese, right? Which is just kind of like, whatever, like I'm, if there's something I have to have cheese on, I'll have it, but I'm like, not that big deal. Right. And then creamy sauces. That's another one. Oh yeah. Um, so right now all I'm really do at home is some kind of nut butter. I'll do like a peanut butter and jelly 
rice cake yeah. before bed with yeah. like a protein shake or something. Um, so I'll do some kind of nut butter and then I will do coconut oil on my toast, which is so amazing if you've never tried it with some sea salt and then chocolate. That's where I get my fats and then trace fats, obviously from any of the meats that I'm eating and some of the yeah. carbs. I mean, as of right now, like I'm not really getting too many fats from too much. It's usually going to be nut butter because that's what I want. Um, you know, if I am doing cheese, I'm actually measuring it, which is kind of like gross in a way. Um, <laughs> but you know, that's the thing. Like I'll swap one fat out for another. Maybe one day it's going to be like a guacamole cup. Um, you know, if I'm having ground turkey and I know it's not the 99%, I know that's going to be a higher fat. So I'm probably not going to be able to have, you know, a whole lot of nut butter or avocado or even like, you know, a whole egg. So, cause like I made burgers the other day, I made turkey burgers. Oh, um, how'd that turn out? Fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. I had a bun, I had a turkey burger that I made. Um, and then also I put a fried egg on it. Cause you know how much I love that. Love that. It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's my favorite. Yeah. So that's really just for those of you that are just joining and um, or those of you that have been here, if you have any questions about nutrition, diet, macros, or my intuitive approach, whatever, please feel free. We are your humble servants. That's why we are here. And I'm just going to check some of the comments that were left earlier for some of the workout stuff. Yes. And then we can circle back. There's Let's a see. We were yeah. asking about New Year's resolutions and how they were going. And I'm doing good. Four to six days a week in the gym, which is fantastic. She's local in the studio. I love I, that. Okay. Um, but having the accountability of your program, oh. I've definitely gotten my ass to work out when there is no way I would have done it otherwise. We didn't pay her to say that either. Well, thank you so much. I love that. Right. The same way too. I'm like, listen, bitch, go do your shit. Yes. Uh, then we have, let's see, Betty Hope says, just started strength training, but I'm feeling a cold coming on and I'm on my week only on week two. two. Let me just tell you, all right, this happens and don't quote me on it, but I believe, and I've read this somewhere and I just, that's why I'm saying, don't quote me on it, that when you start working out and especially if you haven't for a minute, it is a form of stress on your body, yeah. right? It's a form of stress. So we see it time and time again when people start gung ho and then they're all about it and they they get sick and then they get sidelined and they get discouraged and then they quit. Happens so much. It's it's not a coincidence. It is definitely a thing. So I urge you to take care of yourself and make sure you get better and also put your workouts on your schedule for next week and like just start thinking like that's I'm not stopping. This is just a hiccup, right? Unless you still don't feel good, but yeah, it says, how do I get back on track after recovering oh, from this yeah. square one? Yeah. Yeah, I would, um, you know, and definitely just kind of take your time and go slow getting back. And then when you do that, you're just going to keep getting better and better. Like, as we said, you know, I've been in the gym 10 years. You've been in the gym a hundred years. <sighs> close, <laughs> but you just do, yeah. you know, I've gone to the gym. I was saying, if you, you know, if you didn't catch in the beginning where I've it's January 17th and I've been to the gym three days this week, yeah. my daughter was like, mom, that is not okay for you. She and I'm like, yeah, like five years. she was going to come get me yeah. and drive me to the gym, my personal Uber. So it's in, I, um, I had a little bit of gym anxiety yesterday. I think yeah, I texted, texted you. I texted and I was you. Like, it's fine. It's like riding a bike. You'll be fine. I was like, why do I have anxiety going to the and then gym? And I said to me of the bike on fire. Yeah. Down <laughs> so just so you know, that is normal. I've been doing this for a very long time. And when you get removed from a certain environment for a period of time, yeah. that was already maybe a little bit, not necessarily intimidating, but, you know, it was a challenge to navigate when you, you have to just expose, it's exposure therapy. You just have to do it, you know? <laughs> talk about me with that you know like you left and so i, I was training by myself okay, and then friend i got sad <laughs> and so i was like fucking why am i not training at my own studio that's stupid so here i am now yeah i'm gonna be part of the goddess body project and you're shit and you're training with the girls i love that okay uh let's see someone says i just passed my certified personal trainer exam oh congratulations training's great but i've been eating like an asshole while studying ironic right i know and listen get yourself on a snack regimen yes food and snack regimen um, okay. Let's see. Do you have any recommendations? I've been trying to do more lifting, keeping my body weight and trying to get thick. 
Okay. So Mm -hmm. basically depending on where you're at with your body fat and what you're thinking, keep lifting heavy. If you are too tired to lift heavy, you're probably not eating enough. However, it kind of is going to depend on how comfortable you are with getting uncomfortable in your thick season. Okay. Yeah. How many C's do you want after the thick? Mm-hmm. Do you want two C's? You want three C's or you want six C's? Because I'm at, I'm like at two C's a C's and that's not even very impressive. No, two C's is not. You're at four. I'm working on six. I feel like sister's at a three. Yeah. I'm the back. I'm the caboose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we have one more question. What flavor whey protein shakes put on the most? Oh. What? Um, well, it's not going to be the flavor. Yeah. Um, put on the most you, muscle. This depends. If you are a thin person and you're trying to gain muscle, you probably need a gainer. Yeah. Some people do. Weight gainer. However, if you are thicker. I do have a suggestion, though. The NutriShop guy is in the comments. He's kind of a creeper. Just kidding. It's my boyfriend. Nutri-shop but he 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 is in here just cheering us on in this lovely live. So if you click on NutriShop Livermore, ask him all the questions. He is your humble servant as well, because I said so. And he'll tell you what you need. I promise you. But uh, but honestly, just again, if you ha- are having a hard time putting on weight, her suggestion is likely going to be a good one. But if you're just needing uh if you're trying if you're just needing put on muscle, you just need sufficient protein from sufficient sources, right? Yeah. Complete. This is all proteins. How much you weigh and how much protein you're eating. Yeah. So it's a complex question, but like I said, hit him up and he can probably recommend some good stuff for you. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that was all the questions, but we were just gonna like s- just polish this off for let's see, how many minutes are we at? Oh, we're only at 40. Okay. That's good for us. I'm <laughs> I'm proud of us. About uh just some personal things, right? So <laughs> for me, I'm just living over here in Livermore. I have no friends here. I have no friends. Good. And my my friends don't want me having new friends, but I need friends. But I also have like a friends prerequisite. And I know that sounds really dickish, but there are like you, there are certain prerequisites for friends. Yeah. I feel like as adults, you should have them. There, it's a filtration system. Yeah. Right. Like you, I can't, you can't be trying to be my friend so I could be your personal trainer. No. So like, let's not do that. Yeah. And you know, you need a positive Pollyanna. I need a positive Pollyanna. Not an annoying one because you already have one. I can't handle two of you. (laughs) But yeah, I've been here and I'm just filming all the content and creating all the things and living life and going to concerts and going to dinners and traveling with my boyfriend and just being crazy. It's great. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas was fun. My whole family got together, which is also always a little bit crazy. Thursday was, or Thursday, Thanksgiving was a little bit chaotic in my brain because there was a lot going on. Um, And we spent it with my ex-husband. Yeah. And his wife. Yeah. If you guys didn't know, they spend the holidays with. Yeah. So, so that was fun, you know, because I have a new boyfriend, like not new, he's new, but not new. And this is our first Thanksgiving together. Okay. He's a good guy and our first Christmas together and all the things. And so it's like, it's just, you know, all the first like, oh, how's this going to be around the holidays and all that fun stuff. So it's been fun. I love it. Yeah. How was, how was your Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that? It's great with the families. Um, My daughters turned 21, my twin daughters. So we took them to Vegas and that was a crazy four days. I don't think I've ever done that much stuff in Vegas in one trip. You guys did like so much. I'm like, oh my God, now she's here. Oh my God, now she's there. What the heck? They're getting a tattoo? What the hell? You know? Yeah, we had fancy dinner. We did the ice bar. We went to Area 15. I got tattoos twice. Um, (laughs) We went to the drag brunch. We went to two shows. We saw Blue Man Group. Yeah, it was great. What would you recommend for anybody who wants to go to Vegas? Out of all those things, what was your favorite? Okay, always see a show. And we did not see the show this time. But if you go, go see Absinthe. Really, really great. Um, We saw Blue Man Group. It was actually pretty cool. Um, The Ice Bar, if you have a good group of people, if you guys all go at one time, it's kind of cool. Because it's like a, basically, if there's not a lot of people in there, it's a private bar. Fun. You're in the ice. And it's great for pictures. The Drag Brunch was a blast. Um, I want to do that so bad. It was fun. We had a good time. Yeah. yeah so so great. all the things. You're basically saying do all the things. Do all the things. Yeah. I would. All right. Well, I think that was great. We did great. Oh, we did New Year's Eve. Do we want to touch on that? Yeah. I mean, this isn't an after dark episode, so we really can't go too deep into that because we like to give the least people a warning before we start 
discussing things of sensitive nature. <laughs> so we'll keep it a little PG-13. Yeah. But we did go to a lifestyle party mm -hmm. for New Year's Eve. If you don't know what that is, just quick Google away. <laughs> and um, no, we don't do those things, but we like to be around them because it's fun and hot and sexy and all kinds of fun things. And so, yeah, there was a group of us that went and we had, I, you know, we had a great time. Yeah, we did have a great time. It was like, there was day parties, there was night parties, we had breakfast all together. Like it was good. It was a great kind of like a group. Not yes. <laughs> it was a group excursion. But and you know, if anybody's interested and wants to know more, feel free to leave it in the comments rather than us just, you know, decide to blow up an after dark episode in your ears of like, oh my gosh, wow. But if you would like to know, just you know, comment in in the YouTube comments or the Instagram comments and uh or dm us and you know we can we can do that but uh it was yeah it was a great time i think my favorite part of those events is that it's like almost like i get to be someone else yeah you know like jack went to we went together it's our first like kind of big event we've gone to a few of them together but this was like you know a thing where like all the things were themed and like dress up and i'm not usually like a person that likes to dress I up fucking love it and you do I love it. it's great. but I love dressing up very provocatively. And so I don't get to do it around here. No. Like in my day to day with like my neighborhood kids running around, like who's the crazy lady in, you know, in her booty booty shorts or whatever and, and pasties. Yeah. That's when, you know. So it's it's fun. I, I enjoyed it that part. It just brings back the Yeah. The, I mean, if you guys have been around a long time or if you've heard my episode, you probably know that I used to rave back when I was a kid. And I didn't mean like a little bit of raving. I mean like a lot of raving for a long time. So I still love a really good party. I will dance my fucking ass off until my shoes fall off. Literally. Literally. Literally, they blow up. <laughs> and then she usually falls and we, you know, we all pick her up and it's fine and whatever, yeah, you know. So, I mean, it's just a really great environment to kind of go and have fun and just be whoever you want to be. I didn't even have my phone on me the whole weekend. I literally took like three pictures. One was of pancakes. <laughs> yeah. And it's because you're so like you're just in the moment and you know, there's a lot going on. So it was really fun. And then we came home and it was like, it's really weird acclimating to normal life when you've been in that environment, but we managed and we're amongst the normies now just doing our thing. And, uh, we're ready to crank out some crazy great episodes. I've already mapped out like all the episodes for quarter one. So we have a lot of great stuff in like hormones and fat loss and all the stuff that you guys love to hear about already. You know, we, we saw the, the, uh, stats of last year and what resonated with people. So we'll be bringing more of that good stuff to you guys. And we have a little fun side project of uh, mo motivational Mondays. Motivation they're little mini motivational Mondays, but You're they're like, they're like, um, what did we say earlier? It's like, it's like your, 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 as your personal trainer, this is what I want to tell you, or as your bestie, this is how I would tell you. Yes. So you're going to get the best <laughs> of both worlds. All right, you guys, this was really fun. Thank you so much for joining us today in our boobies, bodybuilding, and bullshit. And listen, if y'all like us, you know, do a thing. Give us a thumbs up. Share it somewhere. Give it to Subscribe. Send it to, to somebody YouTube. and say, listen to these two crazy bitches. You know, I kind of like them. And then, you know, we'll have more crazy bitches in our clan. All right. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye. Bye.